Hi guys, um, welcome to my uh, attempt to do some little editing videos to keep us all busy. Um, I'm going to show you how to add a texture to an image using Photoshop. So this is an image that I'm going to use. I've got an area of quite plain background. This is straight out of camera. So there may be some editing adjustments I need to make anyway. Um, but it, it could be improved. And I like a very arty painterly effect to my work. So um, that will be what I'm going to do. Um, I purchased a texture from Etsy. It looks like grotty wallpaper. Um, I think it's fab. And I've made a texture of my own as well which is like a, a motley painty dabby thing with a photograph of a concrete patio as the base and then I've added the colours through in Photoshop. Um, so this is going to be what I'm going to have a work on. So I'm not the best Photoshopper. I'm not here to say this is the one way to do anything. I'm just here to share and hopefully you'll be kind to me and it will maybe make you want to share little bits and pieces that you do. So first of all, I'm going to pull the texture on top of this portrait. This is Cat Lee and I'm going to go and click on the texture that I want. I'm going to go into my top left menu. I'm going to click the move tool now I'm using OBS Studio as a recording software. When my cursor hovers over the tools, it does actually tell me on screen what the tools are, but the recording software won't pick that up. So this top one is my move tool. You'll see my cursor has got this little funky uh, X and Y axis arrowy thing on. So I'm going to click I'm on a mouse, so click and leave my left click down. I'm dragging it up onto my menu, wait until the image changes. Then I'm dragging down and can you see, again, my cursor has changed. It's got a plus because it's carrying. My left finger is still down on my mouse and now I'm going to let go. And it should, there we go, should just drop it in. now. First of all, it's not the right shape to cover what I want. So I'm going to do Control T. I'm on a Windows PC, not a Mac. So the Control T and dragging on a corner will transform so I can resize. Now, what I've got now is complete obscuring of the image. Um, so I'm going to use a blend mode. You'll see the blend modes are in the bottom right hand side in your uh, layer palette and it says normal. So where it says normal, I'm going to click. Now what you probably can't see, I get a big list here of varying um, blend modes. I think there's 36 of them, but I'm just going to click one and I'm going to see what happens. So I've clicked Vivid Light, it's a little bit much for me. I've clicked Hard Light, I love that, I like that. I like all of this smudging over my figure. But what I don't like is how the face and the skin seem to be covered over. So I'm going to check that I'm on my texture layer. And in fact, if I'm a good girl, I should be able to, says so me clicking, right texture on that layer just so I know what the heck I'm playing with. I'm going to go down right at the bottom on the right hand side to the white rectangle with the circling. That's a mask. And if I click that you will see that a white mask goes onto my texture. So with masks it's a non-destructive way of uncovering or covering up whatever the mask is on. So it's a white mask. I need to now go all the way over to my left and click on the brush tool 
and click on to make sure I've got black as my foreground colour. Now I'm ready to take off some of the texture, but I have to make my brush big and soft and transparent. So my opacity, I'm coming down to about 13. Um, the brush is as big or as small as you can cope with. Uh, the shortcut for this is using your bracket key to make your brush larger or smaller. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rub away. Can you see every time I rub a little bit, some of the mask is coming off the face and off the skin. Now what I can do is make this larger so I can see more. So I'm going to come over to the eyeglass tool, check that it's got the plus sign on and I'm going to click to zoom in. And I'm going to go back to my brush and I'm just going to take it off some of the skin because I don't want my model to look like she's got a rash. So if I want to be quicker and take more out, I just simply make my opacity a higher number and it takes out more of my texture. Just take that little bit off the forehead. And I can take off as much or as little as I want. I quite like how the scarf is disappearing into the texture and I lose the edge between her head and the wall. And I'm going to leave that lovely long bit of the texture on. I'm just going to take a little bit more off her hair. So I'm changing my opacity again and just taking a little bit off there. Now I'm going to pan out and just see what we're left with at the moment. And I may just rearrange the texture to see if I can get better placement of where the leaves and bits and pieces go over her. So if I want to move my texture, I go back into my lens palette and my texture and my mask are attached by a little link, like a chain link. So I'm going to click that chain link and it disappears, which means then if I click my um, mass, uh, sorry, my texture, I can move it. So I could even rotate it and go for as many different effects as I want. Can you see now I've got it all at one side and not the other? Maybe if I just pull that a little bit more away. And the nice thing with working like this, it actually leaves the places that you have masked out in place. It isn't going to disrupt them and move them. So I can play for hours now, having a great time. And I can even lighten out some of the mask if I don't want it to be as strong. So I'm going to go with that for my placement. And I'm going to click the link between the image uh, of the texture and the mask to secure it again. And then I'm just going to add the second texture that I had over the top and almost use that as a colour tone. As you can see, my poor computer is a little bit slow. Bless it. It's got so much crap on it. That, can you see I've got my link back, so my mask is secured back to my texture. I'm going to open up my other texture. Go back onto the top left into my move tool and simply drag this one up, drag it down, unclick. It should drop any second. There we go. I'm going to do my control T and I'm dragging with the transform, double click. And again, I'm going to go into the blend modes. This says it's normal, so it will be opaque and it will cover over the whole of the image. 
but I do want it to be transparent. Um, and this lovely grain always makes things look like an oil painting, which I quite like. So I'm going to go into my normal. I'm going to go into soft light. Let me take it off and put it back on. So again, it's becoming very arty, more painterly. If I go into multiply and then take my opacity down, she will emerge. And again, I can mask this. I can mask certain areas. I can mask the skin out. But this is the point. I think this is probably my most favourite part of playing. I just love this sort of feeling that I can create and play. Now, this is where I'm wanting to go with this. Bobbing on a mask, coming back into my black brush. And I just want to take out a little bit and emerge her out of this sort of lovely painterly surface texture. It's just chugging away and taking bits out. And in fact, I think I'm quite happy with that. Maybe just take down a tiny little bit more with my opacity. Yeah, I'm going to leave her like that. So what I've done, I've got an image and I've pulled on one texture with a pattern on and taken out the skin with a mask. And then I've pulled on a second image uh, which the texture was very oil painty um, and then I've used that to give it a painterly feel. So I hope that's been interesting. I'm Jane Lazenby. Um, I do arty shit and play with horses. Um, keep yourself safe guys and hopefully see you and do another one. Cheers. Bye bye.